this case, we're putting together a student council to organize a dance. And we're supposed to choose three people for this council, and there's nine people to choose from. Now, let's take a moment to make sure that we've got this clear. If we were to choose a council where there were different unique positions, then the order of those three people would matter. In other words, if we had like a president and a vice president, a secretary or something like that, then if we chose them in one order and then switched them around to different positions, it would be a different selection and it would be a permutation. In this case, we're just told that we're choosing a student council. And so we are to assume that these council members are all kind of equal. In other words, if we choose one first and the other second and the other third, mixing them around wouldn't make any difference. This is a combination situation. So let's take a look at it from that point of view. So in a combination situation, we would say that, in fact, the n equals nine. We have nine people to choose from. And we're making a group of three. And instead of saying NPR, we would say NCR. It's a combination. So we have nine people to choose from. And we're choosing three. And it doesn't matter what order we choose them in again. In other words, we should have less combinations because the different orders don't matter. They would be considered the same. And so by doing this, we can pull out our combinations formula and we would say n factorial over r factorial and n minus r all factorial. And to plug those in, 9 factorial over 3 factorial, 9 minus 3 factorial. So here's our extra term in there, and that reduces it down so we have less opportunities or less possibilities. And so we plug these in and calculate it out, and it comes out to 84 different ways that we could have chosen that student council. 